You are now listening to Out of the Blank. 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 Welcome to another episode of Out of the Blank Podcast. I'm here with Alexis Hay. Hello, everybody. Hey, 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 Alexis. Yes, I've got that my whole life, but it never gets old. <laughs> now, do you hate your first name only because of that, uh, like, Alexa thing? I feel like that might mistake Alexis. Sometimes. Um, Since that has came out, a lot of people do call me Alexa, and I just roll with it. It's close enough for me. As long as you don't call me Alex, we're cool. But I, Alexa, Lexi, I, few people have called me Alicia and I'm like, sure, you're close. <laughs> like, it's not like a huge deal to me. Yeah, you just take out some letters and add a couple more, it'll be okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I had one person call me Jim and I was like, just looked at him, I was like, what's up? They're like, oh, Jim, how's your day going? I'm like, it's going pretty good. I just rolled with it. I was like, you don't even know me. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it's some, like, yeah, someone said hi to me. He'll go with it. <laughs> Hey, at least they said hi, right? Well, why, exactly. don't you, why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself and, um, if you want, what you do professionally? Um, well, I am a pastry chef here in Portland, Oregon. I've been just made the career advancement to that earlier last year in May, but I've been baking professionally for about five years or so now. I graduated the Cordon Bleu in 2014, but have literally just been in my kitchen baking since a child, always getting screamed at to clean up my mess and. So my mother thought, you know, I should go to culinary school and destroy someone else's kitchen. And it's been working pretty good for me. <laughs> so how did you get, like, why why'd you start baking, like, all of a sudden? Is it just something that someone showed you what to do and you just got hooked to it? Um, it was just, like, as a kid, I think I just made a cake somewhere, probably with my grandma or something. I just really loved just doing something with my hands. And I really had a sweet tooth. So I was like, hey, I like sugar. I can make things with it like win-win for me and I realize it's also cheaper to make it than to go buy it okay what's your favorite pastry uh probably cheesecake or just a simple chocolate chip cookie all right now it depends on how you eat your chocolate chip cookie I like to when I make them I actually put some sea salt on them so they're salted chocolate chip cookies and then I just like it warm with just like some milk well almond milk in my case you don't like them hard no, soft and chewy. Ah, see, I like like I like mine like a brick. Oh yeah, no. I'm like toss that in the oven a little bit longer till it's like black and crispy. <laughs> I and see, then give it to me. Every holiday I have, like my mom or somebody that's like my grandma will be baking something, but they always forget the biscuits in the oven until after we've eaten. The next thing you know, the whole house smells like burnt biscuits and everyone's like, you ruined it. I'm like, this is what I love. And then you bite into it and you just hear the crack of porcelain of the teeth. <laughs> yeah that's how i feel about like eating really like hard bacon really uh, yeah because there's some people that they want to you know where it's completely just crispy i'm like well, i want it like wiggly still at least it's better than like it raw i've seen that people eat like it basically oh. like raw bacon like you throw it in the microwave for like a minute i'm like i wouldn't eat that like that looks very very like unhealthy yeah like salmonella yeah there's there's some people out there but Hey, they're alive. So <laughs> now, the, the, I, I, I've talked to a few bakers, and I've always wondered how did we decide what treat goes for a special occasion? Like a cake is for a birthday, a muffin is for like if you want to give something to your coworkers, even though you really don't want to get to know them and you don't want to break the bank. You know, cookies are essential. Like here's a take home cookie bag or something. I'm trying to wonder where all this even came from. Like, why aren't we having I don't even know, like, you know, like a pie for a birthday instead of a cake. Yeah, see, I've learned recently, like in my last like year or so of my career, um, maybe just where I live, but people in my area are more pie people. Like I get so many, like, I don't really like cake. Like I like pies. And it's just like kind of like, hmm, like I know a lot of people who for their birthdays in their families, they've always had pies. But like for me, it's like I think of birthday and I do think of cake. So that is an interesting question of who did like one day decide 
birthdays are cakes, holidays are pies. Well, it's like so weird because like if you ever remember going to your friend's house for like the first time, you realize that not everybody eats exactly like you do. Like your friend, your friend's family's eating like rice and beans or something. You're like, what is this? And then like their whole pantry is completely different. It's like trying to learn their shower. <laughs> it is. It is. Like I remember going to my buddy's. Um, I think it was his grandparents were throwing like like a family event or something. I was like, this is gonna be uncomfortable, but I'll go. But there was like pies. There was all these things, and I was like, this is so weird compared to how my family has it. Like for my birthday, it was like a chocolate like brownie cake, and it mm-hmm. was like you know a little bit of ice cream or something but pies weren't a thing that wasn't a common thing yeah no my house too like pies you didn't see a pie in my house unless it was like thanksgiving or christmas or like one of those holidays like every year it was your birthday you know you got a sheet cake from safeway whatever cake you wanted mom didn't care what flavor you that's tossing what you were out safeway holy oh yeah like, I grew up on the Safeway cake. My very first baking job out of culinary school was a decorator at Safeway. So it's like Safeway holds a little little piece of my heart, but then it's also a place I would never, ever work again. <laughs> my dad made my birthday cake, I think, every single year, even though when I was like 15, I stopped eating them. He just made them because he's like, this is always <laughs> what I did on your birthday. I made you a double yeah. chocolate cake. And I'm like, my tastes have completely changed from when I was young. I don't know when you experienced pie, but I was in my 20s when I had my first slice of pie. Oh, wow. I just looked at it as a kid. I was like, eh, and I would just poke it. I would be that guy. <laughs> yeah. Would you say, like, after having pies, do you prefer more of, like, a warm pie or, like, a cold one, like, fruity ones? Like, mm, See, I, I like a nice, warm, like, pumpkin pie. I, like I never thought like I used to hate like pumpkin spice after like the first day it came out I was like this is just too much everything's fucking pumpkin spice your shampoo you know it's just it's too much it, it should be kept the food exactly but like when I was like I have this really strange addiction whenever I go into a Walmart or something and if you if you if you lose me in a Walmart or a grocery store or anything just look where the bread or the candy aisle is because I have a really weird addiction that I've always done since I was little where I would walk by like a you know you see one of those Lindor eggs or those like little um cakes in like a little kind of closed off container I stick my finger just poke down on the plastic until it makes a hole in it or I'll crush the candy (laughs) in the thing I've done it forever like my I remember like my family would always be like what the fuck are you doing and my I get that I get it like I'll do kind of not with food but if there's like packages like in the middle of the aisles at the stores I have to poke holes in the plastic Oh, I found my best addiction (laughs) part of it was if you go to like, all right, I used to work at Walmart like five years ago. Oh, see, Walmart, love it. (laughs) I waited for them to put me into the breakfast aisle where all the cereal is. And I would just crush everything in the bag. You would get like the little Nature Valley granola bites or something that like little circle balls of like granola. I'd crush the shit out of those. If you got, oh, that's awesome. If you got any breakfast or candy in that time period, I worked at Walmart, you were basically screwed out of every single purchase. I would take it, crack the Reese's, one of them. I would go into the marshmallows. Oh my God. You want to talk about, you're evil. I love it. (laughs) You want to talk about like those people that love like the soothing sounds of like something getting cut or, that that was oh, me glass, with marshmallows. Glass breaking for me, it's glass breaking. Glass breaking. Yeah. Really? Just the sound of like glass shattering and soothing for some reason. Like my cat knocked a cup off the counter the other day, and I wasn't even really mad at her. <laughs> He's just like, I want to yell at you, but that just calmed me down so much. <laughs> yeah. Like I just I find it so interesting, like what people are interested in, especially when it comes to like for you for baking, you know, there's an experience behind that. Like who got you interested in the most? It was it your mother, was it your grandparents? It was I think just on my own. Like I'm the youngest of three kids and so like and uh, from a single mom. So we're always like doing our own little thing. And it was just kind of after school, you would just find me either doing some after school activity, a sport, or just baking. I was stressed or whatever. It was a stress reliever for me and it still is, but now it brings stress as well. But, you know. (laughs) I feel like, yeah, there's a lot of pressure when it comes to that too. Like the amount of like texture, the amount of ingredients, the specifications and stuff. I never was a good rule follower. Like I remember um, in, you know, through basically throughout my whole entire education, I guess you would say that I was not the good student, but like when it came to like 
you know, cooking and stuff, it was just too long of a process for me. I couldn't do it. I have really bad, like just hyper all the time. So like just sitting there trying to bake something, I'm like, oh my God, like if we turn it on high, it'll come out faster. <laughs> See, I used to think that I have like that same thing where I'm like kind of go, go, go all the time. And I found with baking, it like kind of makes me like, I got to stick to this structure, this plan. Like if I deviate too much from it, it's like going to ruin it. If I, you know, so it's like, I do like go off the recipe a little bit. Like I've been told I bake like a cook because I don't keep it precise. Like it can be like two tablespoons. I'm just like, hey, I'm just going to throw this amount in there, call it good. But you don't see bakers do that too often. But Well, it's, it's just in this new way of like chefs and baking in general, we're seeing people that are diving off from the original recipes. I mean, back in the day, it was like, you have to follow specific instructions. You have to two tablespoons, not three, no, not two and a half. No, you need to be exactly two. It's like, it's like eating an avocado. It's only available in that short period of time. Like you get, <laughs> you get one hour. 10 years from when you first buy the avocado, it's cut it in yeah. an hour. If it, any time after that, it's just done. I'm like, this is so tasking trying to learn the process. What's a dab of sugar? What's a tea? What's a teaspoon? Can I just stick a spoon in there and dump it in there? Right. Sometimes you can, but not always. But then that's what I like about it. I like the, like, I'm more of a technique person. So like, that's why I enjoy like doing cheesecakes and macaroons and like any more high end thing. Cause it's like, the process of it's easy, but it's like hard to do at the same time. <laughs> I also think that's like when you look at those pastries and stuff, I like to order them in like a classification of based on like just what your wealth is, I guess. I know that sounds really mm -hmm. weird, but I'm like, if you buy a Carvel cake, like I always got, I was like, you're probably lower middle class, you know, you get that. <laughs> and then you see the people that are getting like the expensive, like, um, eclairs and all this. And I'm like, you feel like you come from an Italian household. I don't know why I think that it just randomly pops into my head. Like you could easily go to food line and grab something off the shelf. Like if you buy muffins, I feel like you want to buy them something, but then you're like, also, I don't really care about them to spend enough more than $5. Yeah, I see that because like I think oh like people are like oh I want to go get like a tiramisu. I think okay, you're a little like hoity toity. Like this tiramisu just kind of seems a little fancy and bougie to me. Yeah, but. So, <laughs> I'm, when I, I'm, I was never like I stopped eating bread a while ago, but there's nothing better than like a nice like crunchy cookie to me. Like I don't know what it is or chocolate chip, but like oh man, a toasted peanut butter and marshmallow sandwich. Get your life together. Like peanut you butter and marshmallow. I've never heard of that. Are you serious? I'm serious. And I've done some weird combos. I've done like peanut butter, Nutella, like jelly. Marshmallow like, fluff? I've done like just, I've done marshmallow fluff on like graham crackers and a chocolate, like a fake s'more, but with peanut butter? Ooh. How are we talking? How are you a pastry chef that have never tried that? I'm okay, sorry, but. For my, my confession, I'm not a huge peanut butter fan. So I typically okay. don't use it a lot. And I try and stay away from like nuts a lot in general, just because I don't have to worry about the whole nut allergy crap. I don't want to kill anybody. Yeah, that's true. That's a weird thing. I feel like, you know, the way we're going with the world today, like there's so many people coming out with different allergies. Now I'm like, you're basically eliminating so many things. I created a peanut butter egg breakfast biscuit sandwich with a chef on a podcast. And then Ooh. I was like, wait a minute, we can't really make this for everyone. We have to do another variation of it. He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, there's so many people out there. Almond with butter or something. Or, yeah. But there's know. so many people out there with a peanut allergy. I'm like, why don't, instead of we use peanut butter for one of them, we just do jam, like do a strawberry, blueberry, a blackberry jam or something. And then do that with an egg. And then you mix it with like some cinnamon and a little bit of like whipped cream or something like Ooh. it's, it sounds crazy, but that stuff works. Like it I, does. Like, yeah. I mean, I live in Portland, Oregon, where this saying is keeping it weird. Like, I work at a place called The Original, and we literally have a burger on two donut sliders. Like, it's a donut chopped in half, with a burger has drizzled all over it. Like, we have a chicken burger that's on waffles. It's literally a chicken and waffle slider. Like, we have some crazy things. <laughs> How often do you really try and create something new? Um, all the time. That's the best, like, at least with my position is when it comes to pastry, I have a really open creativity. We're connected to a Marriott hotel as well. And so I do all their banquets. And a lot of times it'll just say chef choice dessert. And that just, I get to create whatever I want to make for it within like a certain realm of like prices and like things like that. 
And so, but like, what's like a crazy idea you might have tried? Like for me, I remember. Um, I don't really. I'm like, I'm not. A, I'm a big health nut, so regular peanut butter I don't eat. But I'll do powdered peanut butter because it just has like a good amount of protein in it. So it's like the more water you put in, the like the creamier it gets. So I would take a bowl of like a just like maybe like a couple scoops of powdered peanut butter, put some water in there, mix it around, and then I would take like egg whites. I'd cook them. And then I would just take the giant egg omelet thing and just throw it right on top of the peanut butter and just mix it up. But I'm telling you, it works. It really works. No, I made this, uh, I made this really weird cake a while back. What was it? It was like a, a I do maple, have to throw this out there. It was like what? a maple bourbon bacon cake. Like it had like whiskey in it. There was uh. like bacon and like maple syrup. It was very like, I called it the Southern Comfort because that's the type of alcohol I used in it. And it was very interesting. It was either I loved it or I hated it. Like, there was, like, no in-between with it. I find it hard when I'm cooking to hate it. Like, I really do. Like, even if it, like, looks like the most disgusting thing ever, I'm like, I made it, and I'm just going to love it. Like, my brain's just like, it, it tastes good. Everybody that tried it, they're either like, that's really good, or I don't know about that. <laughs> No. I was like, eh, I was trying something new. You know, we're talking about the favorite thing that you like was like you said a cheesecake or what's your favorite thing to cook though? Is it a cheesecake? Because I've I've heard those take a very long time. They do, and that's what I love about them. Like, and every time it can be different. I don't know if it's the oven or what, but sometimes my cheesecake can be done in an hour. Sometimes it's like an hour and a half, and it's just the process of like it teaches me patience like all the time because I'm like I just want to I just want to take off the foil so it cooks faster and then I'm like no because then the top will brown and you got to keep you know that perfect no color on your cheesecake and so it's for me it's just learning to be patient you know it'll it'll be done when it's done yeah see what always attracted me about baking is like when you walk into like a pastry shop or something that first whiff you know, like as soon as you walk in, like, you know, it's going to be a good time and it's going to be good food when you walk in. And like, as soon as you, you know, you just get hit as soon as you walk through the door. Like nowadays, you don't see that anymore. People always talk about like, I went to this donut place and I'm like, really, did the smell take you away? He goes, oh, well, they just look so wonderful. I'm like, you're not supposed to be looking at it. You're supposed to be smelling it. That's what you see. With yeah. It. That's what you want to attract you to. It's like when I just walk into Walmart and I smell Subway, like I get excited. Yeah. I don't know about Subway. I stopped eating them. I felt like a I felt like a jerk every time because I was like, I want this, I want that, I want this. Eventually I was like, dude, just make it how you would eat it. Like make surprise me. You know, I don't want to tell you how to you know what's good. You know what's working today. There's probably something on there that I'm gonna pick that's probably expired and you know it. So just toss me in what's good. <laughs> The next thing you know, it's it's like, you know, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. I'll eat a bite of it. And I'm like, I don't like this, but I'm going to eat it because I basically paid for it. But it's, yeah. a, it's a fun experience. You got to live life on that the edge. Fun. That is fun. But no, I get that because a lot of times like people like how our kitchen's designed. We have, of course, like the, the line cook, the pork. And then behind them is another section where our prep cooks are. And then right behind that is my pastry area. So you have to go through like the entire kitchen just to get to me. And so it's like you smell the food on the line, the whenever the prep's making, and then you get to me, and then it's just like baked goodness just in the back in this little corner, just hiding away. <laughs> How common did you eat desserts when you went out to eat? Um, not very. Like I almost never get desserts when I go out. Is that kind of hard just you being a pastry chef? Like a lot of people aren't really getting desserts only because like the meal is usually a lot more than what we think it's gonna be. Um, it's not that for me. I just have a hard time enjoying other desserts and not critiquing them. And so sometimes I just ruin my own experience. Like if I, something sounds really good on the menu and it's just not like, like if I'm like, I could have made this better, then I just get really disappointed. So I just say, I just say that just don't order a dessert unless it's somewhere I absolutely know makes really good dessert. I've heard of that from a lot of chefs. They're like, once you get enough information about it, you end up like understanding a lot more, like tasting a little bit more. Like most people be like, hmm, so creamy. And you're like, this thing needs salt. This thing should have had this on top of it. I'm like, that's got to suck, man. You basically ruined your brain forever on just enjoying yeah. the actual food. Like I went out with some friends and we all were going to split the dessert and they made this beautiful honeycomb and it looks so gorgeous. I'm like, this looks perfect. Like, I smell perfect. I took one bite and I'm like, 
they cooked the caramel like two seconds too long and slightly burnt. And my friends like, well, we don't taste anything. I'm like, cause you're not trained. But I had to like force myself to eat it. And I'm like, Ugh. this is why I would never want to work at freaking like a creamery or something. Cause if I can't enjoy Ben and Jerry's ice cream without like testing every single detail inside of it, I'm like, I just ruined my life. Yeah, it really, it just ruins you just going out in general. Cause you know, like, you know how much cheaper it is to make food at home. Like, you know, like you're not paying for just the cost of the food you're paying, you know, for everybody in the kitchen that made it. And you're just like, I know they didn't pay them much for it. So it really does ruin you just to go out and eat. Plus it's, it's, it's hard too, when you're being a pastry chef, like the amount of like consistency that varies on, depending on the recipe, like you want a nice cheesecake, you want it to be moist. You don't want it to be dry when you bite into it and you're like getting a mouthful of ash, mm -hmm. you know, but you don't want it to be too moist to where you bite into it. And it feels like you just, you, you basically bit into like a puddle or something. You're like, what the hell? Oh, uh, what's your favorite Ben and Jerry's ice cream? I have to ask now that I'm thinking about Ben and Jerry's. Um, well, cookies and cream forever is just my all over ice cream. Doesn't matter what brand it is, cookies and cream. <laughs> I changed. I went from a kid eating like a pint of fish food ice cream to, I guess it's called um half baked with like chocolate chip cookies. Ooh, that one is good though. But these days me and dairy don't get along too well. So I limit my ice cream because just the non-dairy ice creams aren't as good. Like the coconut milks and cashew milks, they're good, but I'm like, it's not ice cream. Like, it's not what I want. It's not creamy Tillamook, you know, goodness or, you know, Ben and Jerry's. When I was a kid, I remember eating it so much. And then, like, I haven't eaten it in years. I just see it. I'm like, I lost the taste for it. Like, ice cream in general. I just look at it. And I'm like, I don't really need it anymore. And same thing with bread. I haven't had it in a few years. The only thing that really kind of gets me going is I see a Domino's pizza or something. You smell that oregano <laughs> they use on the crust. I'm like, fuck. Yeah. Yeah, there was a period where I cut uh, just gluten and dairy out just for like health reasons. But then I slowly started adding gluten back and I can eat bread and I can eat cheese again. But like cream, ice cream, milk, like yogurts, those things, my body's still like, nope, you can eat it, but you're going to hate life later. Yeah, it's it's funny because you said that you um didn't don't really eat a whole lot of dairy, but you having to reincorporate bread and everything like just now, kind of being able to eat it and stuff like that's gotta be difficult just being a pastry chef because you have to really taste what you're making as well. Yeah, even well, still I take like little bites of like everything I make. I don't eat like a whole lot of it unless it's like something I'm I'm bringing home, but like. Unless it's my morning cookie, because every morning I have a chocolate chip cookie for breakfast, because I'm, you know, I'm allowed to. You can be two, <laughs> and you can be 80, but a chocolate chip cookie is good any time of day. I'm an adult. I earn the right to eat a cookie for breakfast. All right, I have to ask. Now, what flavor of cake do you like? Oh, flavor of cake, red velvet, or carrot. <laughs> See, I was always the basic chocolate. And then I was like, you know what, though? If you had like a vanilla with a brownie inside of it. And then now we got all these crazy combinations that are like just like out of this world compared to when back in the day. It was like, what do you want? Uh, wh What do you have? Oh, we have chocolate, vanilla or sherbet. I'm like, oh, yeah, Um, I guess I'll take the, the, the chocolate. It's like now we have like, what do you want? I'm like, uh, what do you have? We have chocolate truffles gaffant with the soccer souffle. We even got of a you got a Mountain Dew flavor. You want that? I'm like, what the fuck is happening? Yeah, yeah. I just made a cake last week. It was like a strawberry cake, and then with like a strawberry lemon buttercream. Just because I was like, I'm feeling summer vibes. I'm gonna make a strawberry lemon. Cream. Now, when it comes to what's the hardest thing you've probably been, ever been requested to make? Um. I would say at one of my old jobs, I was working for the Porter Hotel, which is a Hilton hotel, and I had to make chocolate cups with like an, a, what, and then I had to fill them with a, a white chocolate orange mousse or something. It was this crazy, crazy thing that I got called in on my day off. My boss was like, I need you specifically for this because no one else can do it. And I'm like, how am I going to make chocolate cups? She's like, I don't know, figure it out. And I had to run all over the hotel and find little plastic cups just to pour chocolate into and then figure out how to get them out of there. And I was there all day long. But by the end of the day, I figured it out and they looked absolutely beautiful. And then the next day they told me that 
actually Portland food critics were the one eating that food. Ooh, you ever get a bad review? No, they loved it. There you go. You got that five stars on Yelp. Yeah, and I was like, oh, well, thanks for not telling me during because I definitely would have been panicking, but. Now, what exactly was, is the wide variety of things you cook as a pastry chef? I feel like I've only really thought of like cupcakes, like the basic stuff. Um, well, at my job, like my pastry cakes stick mostly to like cakes, pies, and cheesecakes. I make homemade pop tarts in there. Um, but then for the banquets, I can do anything. Like I make them like vegan puddings I make them cakes different types of brownies cookies sometimes there's just a request like someone wanted a an angel food cake with strawberries one time so I had to make them that they put macaroons on my list pretty much anything (laughs) I don't stick in one lane I like to go everywhere do you prefer to decorate them up real nice like a lot of people do like a superman cake or they do like um you know like uh, try and make like a tropical beach really go all out with like the crazy like appearance of it because i feel like each pastry chef or chef in general focuses on a specific thing whether it's taste whether it's time whether it's um clean cleanliness of it or whether it's just the preparation like the art of plating yeah mine is definitely like the overall like decoration of how it looks when it's done whether it's a cake a cheesecake a plate of dessert just i like see myself more as like a decorator like doing all the finishing touches but at my job now like i don't have all the resources and time i would love to like go as big and extravagant but i do what i can with the basic stuff that i have in the kitchen Okay, I'm going to ask this. What's the most memorable thing or, or like memorable, I guess, dessert or treat you had when you're a kid? Everyone's got a kid memory of like a special cake or something, like the whole thing. I remember being a kid and having my birthday party at the Family Fun Center, which is like a small little arcade or whatever. You got skee ball and shit, all that. And I remember the guy used to let me go up on top of the thing and just throw the skee ball thing right into the hundred until I got the high score. He's like, I don't care. I hate my life. I was like, all right, cool. <laughs> but uh, eating the chocolate cake like when you're cutting the cake you get the candles on there and everything it's like man everyone gets like that either they want the end piece they want the piece but mine was always like ah it's, you know get that middle piece with the major fudge in the middle i mean oh as a kid i would say even to this day just my grandmother's fudge like we only got it at christmas time and every year it was like christmas is coming i get grandma's fudge like she would make normal just chocolate fudge like caramel like butterscotch peanut butter white chocolate so many flavors and i remember as we were getting older there was less and less flavors and then one year she just she just brought just normal chocolate fudge and i was like grandma like where's all the other ones she goes you kids are older i don't need to put in all that effort anymore holy crap i was just like i was like what and i'm just like now that it's like oh grandma and now i haven't even had fudge in a few years now that i think about it Ooh, i had the open. same thing happen with my grandma she used to make these things we don't even know what to call them they're roll like the pretzel rod sticks the long ones she would lay out a bunch of like chocolate chips like dark chocolate chip white chocolate chip caramel salted pecans all these types of things and she would dip them in caramel and she'd roll it all over those things and she would put them in giant gallon freezer bags she would make like thousands of them when we were kids and then like at the, just like she always gave it out on christmas and all of us know like hey you try a uh, grandma's pretzel sticks yet and you're like yeah, yeah, yeah did you get some and like everyone's trying to steal them out of each other's freezers like hey man yeah um, i was just stopping by can i use the bathroom and i'm like sure you live an hour away all right yeah use the bathroom and then like i stay like, out of my freezer <laughs> i walk away and like next thing you know he's in my freezer eating the things like dude these are so good i'm like what the hell are you doing man he's like dude they got m&ms on them. i'm like what the hell but I remember every time we would go up there for the holidays and we would go right into her freezer and just there'd be gallon bags of it, like special gifts that she was going to send out. And she's like, I'm like, what? It, well, whose are these? They got a different name on it. He goes, oh, those are the people I work with. I'm giving to them. I'm like, fuck giving that to them. Are you kidding me? Like, what? <laughs> right. Yeah. No, my grandma also makes these really good burritos and we call them grandma burritos. They're just these simple, just beef and cheese burritos. And, you know, as kids, we always had them in gallon bags in the freezer. And then as adults, she would just give them to my mom with our names on them. Well, I now live an hour away from my family. And my mom calls me one day and goes, sorry, you don't get your burritos because you didn't come to town and your sister took them. (laughs) 
Oh my goodness. The fact that how thievery could accomplish over (laughs) some food that's really, really good. Like people always go, why was he stealing that? It's like, you understand when you're hangry, like you'll do anything. There's times I'm at self checkout trying to pay for something. (laughs) I don't even know. Like, what do you mean? I have to place it back onto the scanner. I'm like, are you serious? Please remove everything from the bagging area. I'm like, fuck you. Just let me eat. Just let me have it get out of the store yeah. like that's why people walk in the stores they're just eating a bag of chips like are you gonna pay for that like yeah well the self scanners the- get really mad when you do that because then the item isn't the weight it's supposed to be and then the person has to come over and override the system that happened to me with like a, a drink like a month or so ago i was drinking this drink when i put on the self scanner like it like went at work and she's like it's because you drank some so it's not recognizing the weight of the item that it should recognize Oh, that's the trickery. It's the same thing. Like if you do, um, like, you know, there's uh cucumbers and there's zucchini, just scan them as cucumbers. So it's like 50 cents <sighs> less. And the woman's like, you didn't just get those are zucchini. I'm like, I don't know. It's green. So I fucking just clicked it. <laughs> right. You know, sometimes you have to, or you're in the bulk section. You're like, I'm going to get a bunch of different gummies in one bag, but then write down the price of the, of the lowest gummy. You know. Oh yeah. Let me tell you something. Sugar-free Caribo gummy or Haribo gummy bears are the worst thing you can possibly eat. You don't, don't eat that. If Things anybody to your body, exactly. Things if, happen. <laughs> if anybody wants to look up the reviews for Haribo sugar-free gummy bears, they're discontinued, but every review, there's probably around 8,000 of them. And they all explain that your ass will explode like Mount St. Helens. Yeah, it's just it's just the sugar free content of it. Like a lot of sugar free like candies in general. If you eat too many of them, that is what's gonna happen. It's just the type of fake sugar they use, whatever it is, whatever. I don't understand, but yeah, I'm conflicted with that though, because like you're getting a dessert, you really want it to be sugary, and you want it to be like kind of like you want it to be trashy goodness. I'm sorry, that's what it is. You want it to be like. I mean, I'll give you an experience. Like when I was older, um, my buddy owns Newfoundland dogs. Well, he did. And uh, the weirdest thing, when it was their birthday, they would get them a caravel cake, like the chocolate ice cream cake. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this can't be good for a dog. I heard chocolate was really bad. But they would just like, you know, they would put the cake out and be like, happy birthday. Then would cut them off a slice and do that. I remember bringing the cake over to the party. We had to pick it up from the store as mom asked freaking i've dropped it like three times like it was terrible i don't know what was up with me but it looks so trashy in the thing and i'm like it's i'm still gonna eat it anyway like that's what yeah, it was it's, like it's still cake you know it's, it even it looked like someone smashed it with their foot but i was like this <laughs> shit's still good i don't care i'm going back for that reminds, yeah like last week i pulled an apple pie out of my case because i'm like what happened like what happened to this thing it was just like demolished like i couldn't even tell like I'm like, why would you put this back in there? So I just like pulled it out and put a fresh one in there. And I'm like, who wants pie pieces? <laughs> and I'm like, it tastes the same. It's just physically, you can't even cut this thing to get a proper slice out of it. So we can't really sell this. Now, where's your view on muffin stand? Because I feel like I used to do jet skis. And I remember I would always get a banana nut muffin across the street at a 7-Eleven with a Slurpee. And this woman's like, you eat so many banana nut muffins, you're going to turn into a banana nut muffin. I'm just looking at her like, that's like impossible. Like You can't turn into a banana nut muffin. Like, that, like As a just... kid, I was always told I was going to turn into a bag of Cheetos. But, you, know. Eh, you know, it never happened. No, but I, just I love at... muffins perfectly. Like my favorite is a blueberry muffin with like that, like crunchy sugar topping, like. So you have that crunchy muffin top, and then the rest is just this. Yeah, do you eat the actual full part of the muffin? Because I see some people just pick off the like the laced up top, like the top is just like um, I don't know, it's a glazed up top for some reason. Yeah, the muffin top. No, I I love the whole muffin. Like I like to cut my muffin in half, and then I eat it from the side, so that way the whole time I have the whole top and bottom of the muffin in every single bite. All right, but what flavor do you prefer? You said blueberry? Blueberry, yeah. I'm all right with the blueberry. I feel like I don't like the double chocolate ones. The double chocolate no, is terrible. But my favorite is one that I actually make myself at work. I put uh, semi-sweet chocolate chips and, cran- and dried cranberries in it. And then when it comes out, when they're still warm, I drizzle a little bit of just like a flat icing. And so you have this just thin little sugary icing and this chocolate, this fruity chocolate muffin and that's really delicious (laughs) um when it comes to 
cookies, you like them soft and gooey, and you know, you like you whatever the pie. How do you like your pie though? Do you like it moist? Because I feel like that's a big thing that a lot of people like, and I can't handle it when it's too slimy. No. Pie needs, it has to have that flaky crust. Like, I'm not a huge pie pan, pie pan, <laughs> pie fan. Like, I'm, I'm a cake person, but I prefer more cold pies, like lemon meringue pies, key limes, banana creams, chocolates, like, but then if it has to be fruity, then I like it, it has to be warmed up. Oh, okay. The, do you prefer your pie should be cold. Do you prefer your treats be to be um do you prefer your treats to be like super fruitful like like fruit colors or fruit taste I would say like people like the coconut and all that but I'm like I want it to be sweet and decadent. Yeah. Like I'm definitely a fruit and chocolate person. Like for sure. Like and if they can go together that is like the most perfect combo ever. <laughs> Like whoever put chocolate strawberries or chocolate banana together, like they m made basically, I don't know, the best invention ever. Adding chocolate to anything, I feel like, is the best. Mm -hmm. Like chocolate milk and then just adding a little bit of whipped cream to it. Yeah, I do this um, cookies and cream cheesecake where I just have a basic, like my basic cheesecake that I make. And then I drizzle chocolate all over the top of it. And then a bunch of just like Oreo pieces and then more chocolate on top of that. Because then, like, the chocolate, like, pretty much glues all the cookie pieces together. What would you say your worst experience is? I, like, a burn? I've been burned so many times in the kitchen. So, I'm, like, Oh, yeah. Yeah. I have burns all over my forearms and hands. Like, everywhere. But probably the worst, like, injury or whatever was probably when I worked at Safeway, I pulled the mixer off the counter on accident. Like, I tried to move it to, like, clean where the feet were. And one of the feet came off the counter and the whole giant Hobart just flipped down and rolled down the whole left side of my body. And so my whole body was like bruised and just like beaten up for like two or three weeks. Oh my God. Yeah. But I just kept going. I just worked every day. They're like, are you fine? I'm like, I'm fine. Yeah. I'm just decorating cakes. <laughs> I, I was watching on um, like the British uh, greatest British baking show or something. I think that's what it's called. Great mm -hmm. breaking. I don't even know. How to, I try saying yeah, that like five times fast. The Holy Great crap. British Baking Show. There you go. But <laughs> I was watching it, and like the one woman burned her hands, and she was holding it under the sink. I'm like, I know what that feels like, and that's why I don't cook because that is yeah. the worst experience in the world. Because you're you're moving so fast. Like what people don't understand is, especially like if you're working at a restaurant, like you're trying to do, like cooking, baking, anything like that is very very intimate. You're trying to, yeah. you know, get in your headspace, get in, you know, it's your project. You don't want anybody in your personal space usually, especially if you're baking something, you need like quiet, the air needs to be kind of right, you know, and you're. It's like, you know, yeah, when I'm decorating a cake or just like plating the dessert, like got to get in that headspace. Yeah, see, and then someone's like moving past you, like I need this done now. It's got to be like how much longer? How much longer? I I would hate that because I don't like being rushed. Because once I start getting overwhelmed, I'm like I can't I can't even do it anymore. Yeah, that's how I feel. Like like pastry, you don't have that as much. Besides, when I have like banquets, because then it's like that banquet has to go out. If this says one o'clock, that means they're coming like twelve forty five. Like I better be ready to go out the door. And so it's like you're constantly just like. Time is an enemy. Like I've been called a time Nazi by my friends because I'm just so time oriented. Like I'm like, guys, come on, it starts at two. We gotta leave. They're like it only takes ten minutes to get there. We don't need to be there like so early. And I'm like, sorry. Like I just know exactly. I can tell you like if I where I'm at exactly how long it'll take me to get there by the time of the day of the traffic. Like it's just ingrained in me, and it's so annoying. <laughs> I was taught to on time is early. Like you want to show up 10 or 15 minutes early. So I'll show up. Like if it's like, I'm supposed to be there at two, I'll be there at like one forty five or something. Like it's weird. Cause my cousins are the complete opposite. Like my cousins will be like, the party starts at two. They show up at like six. Like everybody's basically gone. They just come and grab a plate and sit down. I'm like, what the fuck? Like you missed the whole thing. They're like, yeah, well, no one's here. We don't care. I'm like, I showed up early, bro. That's funny, but yeah. It's... Have you decided to maybe branch off into your own business, being a pastry chef? I feel like you have enough um, experience. That is my goal. It is. Um, like right now, like I just in May just advanced to being a pastry chef. So it's like I now have more responsibilities than I've had an advanced job. Like I do like my inventory now for my department. 
I have like a couple of bakers that kind of work under me to help me out. So it's like, I'm learning everything I need to learn to run my own business where I'm currently at. And so I'm hoping maybe by, you know, 2021, I'll have something going. But my goal this year is to start my business from home in some way. We have multiple like markets all over town, which I've been considering maybe opening up a booth there or starting, you know, just an Instagram business. You can order through me on there, but I don't know yet what it will be, but this is just, that's just one of the career fields that is never going to go out of business. Like everyone's ordering something for cakes and, you know, people are more than happy to get one specialized for them. I don't know how many bachelor parties or bachelorette parties I've seen where they got like a penis shaped cupcake or something. (laughs) I mean, that's gotta be awkward to make, but it's gotta be like also pretty like, Oh, it's, it's so much fun to make. Like I love doing like custom stuff, anything, cakes, cookies. Do you prefer the extreme customizations on them? Like someone's like, I want you to go nuts on this cake Add everything, you know, like when you're going to like, um, like an ice cream shop or Baskin Robbins or something like I want gummy bears, I want chocolate chips, I want Fritos, I want this. I oh, want yeah. That. And just like going ham on them, like, yo, your cholesterol is going to be through the roof. But that's a bom- that's like a bomb ass treat. Yeah, if I have all the resources, like the more resources I have or more tools in my toolbox, I call it like I will go to town. I used to call my grandfather mentally insane because he would just go up to the ice cream place and be like, can I get, um, we're at cold stone. He's like, can I get vanilla? And that's it. I'm like, fucking vanilla. Like, right. You go are you a, the toppings. At least you, put some toppings on there. Yeah. Like, are you a psychopath? And he's like, what? That's just, just all I want. You can't go crazy, man. I'm like, is it because of your heart? He goes, no, I don't give a shit. He goes, I just like just vanilla classic. I vanilla. have just kind of learned though. Don't put gummies in ice cream. because They get really hard. Yeah. It's, <laughs> I, I learned that the hard way too. I'll tell you, but like the way he eats his ice cream is he sits there, mashes it in the bowl, like grind, like and starts like wicking it, like spinning a spoon around it until it becomes like a very, very like milkshake, and then he just sits there and eats it like that, like it's like a like a pudding. I'm like, what are you doing, man? Like I've already devoured mine. I got the you know the Rocky Road or something with the marshmallow chunks and chocolate chips. I hate fucking sprinkles. I don't know who designed those things. Those are just they're like little Tic Tacs, you know. I don't like eating them, but I love decorating with them because they're just so cute and colorful. <laughs> I always look at like someone that has a cake that's like um those little red little sprinkles, the really really super thin ones. Oh, if you had that on your cake, I hated you. I was like, I'm not eating this. I'm regretting everything. Yeah, like um, I make these uh, homemade pop tarts. Like we always have cherry and blueberry in my pastry case. And so then I'll ice them with, you know, some royal icing. I just put, you know, some sprinkles on them. And they look just like pop, like real like pop tarts. Do you prefer your pop tarts frosted? Yes. Hmm. I don't know. I'm conflicted because I used to prefer them really frosted when I was a kid. Then I found when I got older, I like them blank. Like just you know, just plain. Yeah. I might, I might be a psychopath. Yeah. Well, I mean, I prefer more of a toaster strudel to a pop tart personally, but I don't think I've ever had a toaster strudel. Yeah. They're more of like, like doughy, almost like a donutty like filled thing. Uh, they're hard to explain what they are, but they're delicious. <laughs> they have a Boston cream pie one and it's amazing. What's a macaroon? A macaroon is a f- French cookie. It's like a little sandwich cookie. It's the cookie pieces um, are made from a meringue, like whipped egg whites, cooked sugar, and then you color it whatever color. You can put some flavorings in it, and then you pipe them out and you bake them. And they're just these little like this. And then you normally fill them. Some people use jams or buttercreams, and they're just these little decadent little baby cookies but they're so hard to make like the mixing process of them is what makes them so hard so one little cookie can be anywhere from like two to three dollars for just this little bite-sized cookie because not everybody can make them like i worked at a place and we had i think six bakers and only two of us could make them and that do you feel like that's what you would sell the most probably in your um shop if you ended up branching off and getting your own um, I definitely would sell them, yes. I don't know about the most, but I definitely would sell them. What would you try and prioritize? I know you've thought about an idea for the name too, which I want to hear the name of the place. You've thought probably <laughs> even thought about the design. I feel like everybody that's like has an idea or hope or something, they're like, I'm gonna walk in, there's gonna be Fabergé eggs everywhere. I'm like, what? Like, tell me I more. Have, I have a few 
design, uh, not designs, but ideas. That's my problem. Like, I don't know what I'm going to open yet, but I know it's going to be something. I have ideas from just a simple catering business to I want like a high end dessert restaurant where it would be like, it's like an experience thing. You would go in, you know, and have like the romantic dim lighting, beautiful pastry case where you would order your dessert from. We'd also have just like a menu that's a uh, freshly made dessert, like made on hand, like nice bottles of wine. So instead of going for a fancy meal, you just go for a fancy dessert, but the catches keep the cost down low still. So it's like an expensive night out that's not expensive. Every time I think of a bakery, I two images pop into my mind. One, the one from um, Get Smart with Steve Carell, where they're like in Hungary or Romania or something. And there's like the one woman at the counter, like, what do you want? He goes, I'm here for the biscuits. And she's like, through that door, or you must take number. Like that whole like snow outside, front door open, one thing of like bread on display, then a bunch of cupcakes and all these things. And there's like a back door. And also, the Willy Wonka one, like where all the trucks are just leaving the factory. They're all just piling out one by one. I'm like, that's how I would own my bakery. I do it Godfather style on the corner. So everybody walks in. I'm like, what do you want to have? And they're like, um, can I get a cupcake? I'm like, the price, the price is the price. The price is going to be good. Like I would talk like a mobster. I'd just slick the hair back and wear a suit and be like, you know who owns this block? This is the Colleones. And they would just be like, I'm just looking to get a cake for my nephew, man. That's all. He likes Minecraft. And I'm like, right. I'm going to make you a cake. But yeah, like I have that idea, which the the name of that place would be Bougie Desserts because, you know, kind of be fancy and bougie. But then I've also thought about just a cute little like, 50s style like bakery like all just like old school like pin up stuff on the wall and that would just be like my instagram name just baker girl just because it would just be really cute and then we'd also do like weddings caterings all that and but i've also always just thought about opening just a bakery cafe coffee shop type deal oh that's different that's like what Starbucks tries to do a little bit too. Like you walk in like the Starbucks, order a coffee. They're like, what else do you want? You're like, what? Yeah, like, it's kind of like like a little breakfast restaurant, but then it's also a full-fledged bakery as well. So it's like, I have multiple ideas. So it's like, which one will I open is the question. Well, it's like, that's perfect. All you got to do is find a coffee brand to work up for. I can get you a coffee sponsor. I know some people. I will hook you up. Come on. You know, this is going to be like, I'm telling you, bakers are mobsters. I'm sorry. But if there's a bakery on the block and like back in the old times with like a gang or something, they, they ran that bakery. Like, you want protection? Or I need protection before, man. I got biscuits. It's like, your biscuits are going to be broken. And it's like, oh shit. Like, I don't want my biscuits. <laughs> <laughs> Two ninety five and half off the cannolis. I'm like, oh shit! Here we go. We got suits. <laughs> we own the whole street. We got the block, baby. Right. So you would call it Baker's Girl? Yeah, like Baker Girl. Uh, Just because that's what people know me already as a little bit. Well, my original name I wanted. There's already a bakery with that name here in town. This is why we take our baseball bats and we go over there. I'm telling you. So. Yeah, I walked by one time and saw, and my heart just like dropped out of my chest. So I'm like, that's the name I wanted for my bakery. Mm. I, I like the like, 50s idea, though. I feel like that's what it has to be when it's a bakery shop. I like the classic old school. Yeah, like- and I live in the neighborhood I live in is called Selwood, and it's like this cute, quaint little neighborhood. And there's there's this little there's this cake shop like a few like a mile or so by me, but it's literally just cake. That's all she sells. And so I'm like, there's no other bakery in this whole area. Yeah, I feel like, ah, man, see, I already have ideas running in my head. Like, And so I, I've also thought of there's a few little local coffee shops around. I've thought about baking little sample boxes and going around like, hey, would you want to like sell my items like in your shop? Like, like kind possibly? of get them to sponsor you a little bit. Yeah, kind of like so a little wholesale from home kind of. That's a good so idea. I, I have a few ideas going that I want to, you know, somehow I'm getting something jump started in 2020. Something's happening. That's your goals. You got to have to get out there. I mean, how many times mm-hmm. do people sit there and burn on an idea? Next thing you know, it's like 10 years later. It's like, are, when are you going to do it? Yeah. Like, 
I love my job, but you know, someday I don't want to work for anybody anymore. I want everyone to work for me. <laughs> Especially if you do it with your love too, like making pastries all day. I know a few people that um actually on a culinary trip actually left to go to a culinary school in Germany just to go to prioritize it there. Because if you look up the hashtag chocolatier, all these people that make chocolate goodies and treats. I love chocolate work. They're mm-hmm. all freaking in Germany. Every single yeah. one is like a chef in German. I'm like, I want to get one of them on the podcast, but I'm sitting there reading the description. It's all in German. I'm like, there's no way he's going to understand a damn word I'm saying. Yeah. Like that's another thing I love. Um, I've been told I'm a really good candy maker because sometimes for my cakes, like I want to put something candy on like over Halloween. I was like, Ooh, I'm going to make a really cool candy corn cake. And I went to my chef and I was like, Hey, can you order me some candy corns? And he literally looked at me. He goes, you're a pastry chef, get in there and go make them. And I'm just like, um, uh, okay. Like I've never made candy corn before in my life, but I know the basics of making candy. So I looked up a recipe and I was like, oh, like I literally read the recipe and I was like, really, it's that easy? It's cause it's terrible, okay? If you eat candy corn, you probably are a psychopath. I'm sorry to say, but they're, they're, the best thing I've ever seen is a picture on Facebook that literally says how to eat candy corn. It's like a bag of candy corn, open it up, and then the dude's dumping it in the trash. I'm like, that is exactly how I feel. Yeah, but they just, when, you, when I think Halloween and candy, it's I think candy corn. So, you know, I wanted to do a cool cake for Halloween theme. But oh, and so just... I made these candy corns and they literally are almost 100% powdered sugar and corn syrup like no joke like i ain't kidding it's 100 percent sugar and a little bit of food dye and then you know shape it and it cools down and that's how you get a little candy corn so but it's just i do have to ask now now that you have this business and you have the name for it, you have all these ideas what what are you going to prioritize selling though um i know for sure my cheesecakes because that's One of, I think, is my pride and joy. I spent about two years formulating my cheesecake recipe, tweaking it, changing it, little little details here and there until it is to what it is now. And then from there, I have this base recipe and I'll make lemon cheesecakes, cookies and cream, pretty much any, any flavor you want from this one basic recipe. And so that's gonna be a big thing. Uh, My apple pies, I'm really proud of because I've worked really hard on them and specializing cakes pretty much macaroons anything does the diet trend scare you a little bit the fact that like a lot of people are like cutting out certain foods do you feel like the way we're going with like um society and diet trends like vegan and all this stuff but people are going to cut out breads in general not really because i i enjoy making those things as well so i do plan on having like gluten-free and dairy-free options like in whatever establishment I open. I don't know if I'll quite have vegan. Like I might have, like you can order something vegan like for a request, you know, like an order form thing, but definitely dairy-free and gluten-free you will find wherever I open up shop. I will go to any bakery that has muffins. I'm sorry. Just the fact that I love a nice banana nut muffin or like a chocolate chip. Just, I I eat it like you said, like you, you kind of like cut it in halves or whatever. Me, I pick it. I, I pick the top off and then I pick it down to the bottom. Like I go all the way out on it. I just love that. I like enjoying it a lot. But like anything else when it comes to like desserts or something, if I'm around it, like if I actually am going to eat it, I'm, I basically suck it up. Like I just go and it's gone. Like did you even taste it? I'm like, it was freaking delicious. I know that much. Yeah, I have some friends that I know the slower they eat something, the less they like it. Yeah, that's true. I feel like, my, like I know especially my, when you're someone that normally eats your food really fast you know it's like i know you're not eating that like you normally do so you're not really enjoying it because you don't want to hoover it down <laughs> yeah I'm, i want to see somebody create a recipe where it's like brownie and they include marshmallow and fudge on the inside then they do a cookie crumble up top or like maybe not even like a like a chocolate chip cookie but a vanilla wafer like a, like crush it up into crumbs oh, and just drizzle oh, it up want, top okay i've done something like that i do brookies which one is just my basic brownie chocolate chip cookie marble together with like caramel sauce marbled in it. I do that one. But I've also done brownie uh, Oreo pieces with marshmallow fluff all weaved in throughout it. And oh then my did... God, you're making me salivate right now. Yeah, so I've, I've done that before. So I've wanted to do another one, but I haven't done. We got to create a recipe. Hang on a, a second. I'm thinking... <laughs> Not for cookies, but like 
I don't know. Like, you know, there's the thin, really thin cookies, and there's like the thick cookies, like the bigger ones you get at Subway or something. Mm -hmm. I want to do that with like little balls of peanut butter inside of it, but I want the cookie to have like, um, like dipped in like a nice glaze or something so things can stick to it then using a crushed up like bowl of vanilla wafers or maybe pretzel and just drizzling it up up top add a little chocolate syrup or maybe um depending on if what you're using ingredients wise like if you're going to use pretzel and you're going to use peanut butter use it on a nice like um brown sugar cookie and you just put like a little bit of maple syrup on there bam get your life together mm, that sounds like an amazing cookie now you got to make it so I can just stare at the picture all day yeah. because that's how I consume my food. <laughs> right. That's like I did one day. I was, I was pulling my salted chocolate chip cookies out of the oven one day. And I just looked over and saw this caramel sauce bottle. And I just started dribbling this caramel sauce all over these chocolate chip cookies. And then my coworkers like, what did you just make? I'm like, crack, you want to try? <laughs> it's like, look, if you're not, if you're going to make something, you got to be creative with it. You got to end up being like, look, I'm just going to dump everything and see what happens to it. Like, I don't know how many times I'm just watching my grandma make something. I'm like, you know, if you added that, it would be better. She's like, this is how the recipe goes. I'm like, yeah, but you can incorporate so many different things. You just kept adding shit to it. And she's like, do you want sprinkles? I was like, you already know my answer to that question. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's what I do sometimes when I decorate a cake or whatever. Like, I'm like, okay, I know these are my flavors. This is like what flavor profile I'm going to have it, but I have no idea how it's actually going to look. And that's the and best just, part is being surprised. Yeah. I just throw on some music and just start doing my thing. And like, I finally created this cake over Halloween time as well, that I've been waiting to make for like two years. Cause like, I just didn't think my skill level was like, up to fully like give it justice but it's it's on my instagram um but it's this bloody shard cake it's this white cake and has these i made sugar glass and i shattered the sugar and i put it all over the top of this cake and made this like dark red like jelly stuff and like drills it all over it so it literally looks like there's bloody shards just dripping out of this cake that sounds dope. And also you basically got both fixes. You got a beautiful cake out of it. And also you got that uh, sound of breaking something that sounds like that. I did. Yes. I and it was just, I, I remember when making this cake, I had uh, the piano guys playing in the background. So I just had this like beautiful, just piano and cello going. And I'm just like making this like murder scene cake. Pretty dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Somebody's yeah, getting essentially. murdered over at Alexis' yeah, no. house. I would check it uh, out. Our bartender, when I went to take the cake out to put it in my pastry case, he goes, yep, that's what was happening back then. I'm like, what? He goes, I heard your classical music, and I knew a dope cake was that ready to walk out. <laughs> well, I appreciate you coming out and doing the podcast, Alexis. Yes. Been lots of fun. I want to give you here a minute at the end to kind of promote your content, promote your page mm -hmm. so people can see your awesome creations. Yeah, well, you can find all my stuff on Instagram at bakergirl92. It's like my personal account, my baking account, pretty much just it's my life all rolled up into one page. It's, you know, I want to start doing um, things at home. So here soon, there might be a little menu popping up there with simple cookies, brownies, basic cakes that you can order from me. And so just go check out my stuff and message me if you need anything. Why did you throw some sprinkles on that link share? I would have been like, yo, this is my Instagram. <laughs> this is my Pinterest. This is my Etsy page. And let me tell you something about farmers only. You want to find me on there. That's, <laughs> that's how you got to spread the word. I'm telling you, man, you want to make your, you, you make your cakes creative. You got to, you got to do that plug creative. Yeah. I say my work speaks for itself. Damn. Okay. That's, I, that's so. mad respect on that one. <laughs> That's mad respect. That's like when you walk into um a bakery and you're like, I want this. And like, no, you're going to have this. And they're like, okay, respect, respect. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just, you know, you can go check it out if you want to. If you don't want to, it's all right. I'm going to be here either way. I'm still going to keep doing what I do. So nothing's going to stop that. And that is the best way to end the podcast. Thank you for listening to this episode of Out of the Blank and stay tuned for our next episode.